Hi, this is Bruce Rawls. I'm speaking again with Susan Dugan, and we're talking about A Course in Miracles. And today we uh, decided to, to talk about the Ladder of Prayer, which is in the Song of Prayer supplement of the course. And uh, just, just talking with Susan about uh, rereading this and how much good stuff there is in it. So so uh, thanks again, as always, Susan, for having a conversation with me and, and uh, look forward to this. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I've been in my class on Tuesday nights. We've been um, just started the Song of Prayer. And um, this is actually going to be the topic for um, this Tuesday night. But um, but yeah, it's a good it's a good topic for the spiritual journey, really a good metaphor for the, the spiritual journey with the course, mm -hmm. which is really a, a journey of moving from the awareness of our body, the, you know, belief that we're bodies to um, to an experience ultimately of being a mind. And that's a very, very gradual um, journey <laughs> because we, you know, we don't even know what a mind is when we come to the course and, and mm -hmm. for a very long time we're resisting, you know, we're actively resisting that um, and at least unconsciously and, and often consciously. So, um, so I think, I think that, you know, the song of prayer being something that was scribed as a correction for the course um, about a year after the course as as you know really a correction for all the mistakes that people were making with the course and um believing you know trying to drag it into the world and and make it about um manipulating our dream to to better serve us in the ways that we believe it can you know that would would serve us to have things happen go right for me mm -hmm. <laughs> um from my perspective um and and really the you know the the song of prayer which is split into three parts the first being prayer the second being forgiveness and the third being healing I think that's the order of them, um, that's right. but but really kind kind of correcting those themes um, in the course which really are you know ultimately again there's nobody out there you have to have the meta metaphysics of the course very clearly in in your mind I mean we resist doing that. And um, it doesn't mean that we, that, you know, that's all we think about with the course, the practice of it is very important in our relationships, but, you know, we've got to keep, Ken, is, Ken Wapnick is always reminding us that we have to keep the metaphysics of the course in mind or, or we'll get very sideways with it. And, um, and people do, and people have. And, and mm -hmm. so the, the ladder of prayer, the song of prayer is really about correcting those misperceptions and the and that impulse to try to, you know, um, have the world or and my relationships meet my needs, mm -hmm. and then get Jesus, Holy Spirit, or that, you know, teacher, loving presence in our mind to somehow divine to to intervene for us in some divine way, um, and by by you know cooperating with with you know again um, uh, meeting my needs as I see them. And if we put it in the context of the greater uh, metaphysics of the course, that's impossible because there's nothing out there. There's no one to meet my needs. There's nothing, um, there's no situations out there. This is all a, a dream of, you know, the analogy of a dream that the course uses mm. of believing, you know, of one of the possible scenarios of what separation might look like, you know, my, that the fragment of my decision-making mind is, appears to be dreaming and, We've got to, you know, we can't keep avoiding that that basic uh, fundamental of the course that, you know, if this is this is a non-dual teaching, and um, as much as that might really upset us, and I think if you're really paying attention, it will at some point and repeatedly upset you. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. um, but we still, you know, that's where the maturing with the course comes from. That's what we need help with um in seeing that you know we need to let our needs as we see them go into god's hands the, the song of prayer says but of course it's not really god's hands it's it's the you know the hands of of my decision making mind to make a better choice and to to um you know to look at reality the reality that i'm not separate from god instead of the um you know the experienced reality which is that I, you know, that I'm separate and from God and my entire life is driven toward proving um, the thought system of one or the other that says I exist, but it's not my fault. It's someone else's. So, um, yeah, I think, I think that's where, you know, 
as, as we look at any part of, of, of this, um, it's, it's really, you know, we have to open ourselves to what it's saying. And, and that means a real tough for the ego giving up of, of my, of my insistence that I'm, I'm right about what, what I need, what's wrong. Um, because, you know, there's only one, really fundamentally the, the one problem of the belief in separation, which isn't a problem at all, because it's just a belief. Beliefs can be corrected. Beliefs can be changed. They're, you know, they're not punishable offenses. Hooray for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, well, well put, well put. Introduction, but yeah. Very, an excellent introduction. Yeah. And, and I think your emphasis on, on, uh, you know, that we, like Kim Opnick says, is, is, you know, we can't really stray too far from the metaphysics of the course if we want it to actually truly work for us. And as you were talking about how we, we try to bring the course into the world and make it work on, on a, a physical level, uh, the course reminds us that physicality is really a misunderstanding. It's an, an incomplete um, perception and, and uh, a misperception. And, you know, it's just like in a, a metaphor that came to mind the other day. is like, you know, amoebas crawling up along the surface of a leaf in a pond, the bottom of a pond, you know, with talking about interstellar travel, you know, it's like, well, <laughs> we're, we're just kind of making it all up, you know, as far as, the, 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 you know, guessing what, what the bigger picture is, but uh, um, we keep trying. I mean, but we think we want to fix our little dream world uh, all the time. And so yeah. the other, the other, Another metaphor I find helpful is when I find I'm trying to use the course to to, to make this world better, I, I figure I put my recovering dream repair technician hat on. It's like I, I need to first realize that I'm trying to be a dream repair technician and and use the course to metaphysics to you know fix the dream. But then when I realize that, well, that's not the point. I mean, uh, I, I, I can try that and I, I might have some things that go seem to go better in the world. But sometimes they don't because it's not about that. It's about um, you know the piece that is really the top of the ladder of the course's curriculum. Yeah. Right, and and a choice really it, it is both the top of the ladder is you know when when there is no conflict left and our split mind is healed, but it's also that you know that what is available to us the piece not of this world is always available to us at any given moment that, we, exactly. that we're willing mm -hmm. to admit that, you know, that this isn't working. And that's really hard for us. You know, I mean, I, I what, what this whole practice is about is really looking at um, how incredibly selfish <laughs> I can be, you know, how, how, how incredibly immature we are mm -hmm. in, in, you know, the tantrums that we throw internally, but you know, how do we know we're throwing a tantrum? Well, if I'm angry, if I'm upset, if I'm, you know, um, dreading something, if I'm anxious about something, it doesn't matter what the something or the, you know, the relationship is, it's those, it's that emotional state that we find ourselves in, that is really what we're asked to work with. That's how I know I'm projecting. And as we all know, you know, although the course says there's no hierarchy of illusions and you know meaning that that all of this is a, is an illusion and all of these emotional states are uh, illusions as well but but from our perspective we do have a hierarchy of illusions and mm -hmm. when we're really triggered we think we're triggered you know by something that we've put in our dream someone we put in our dream to trigger us mm -hmm. <laughs> which is what we're doing mm -hmm. um it's my dream it's not that i need it's that i believe i need it's not that i who's in my dream is that I believe I'm, you know, that, that I um, refuse to admit that I'm dreaming. And so, um, so, you know, those, when I, when I'm experiencing that kind of state, um, that's really where, where we do have an invitation to ask for help and to return to peace. And how long that takes us is not really, is okay. <laughs> it doesn't, you know, we, our resistance to this goes so much deeper than we're aware of, and it may take quite a while. And I think the more we work with the course in some some ways, it, it can be harder over time because you're really getting to some of the core issues in your in the story of your dream that um, and and those, you know, very um, where we've invested the most guilt, the relationships in which we've invested the most guilt that we just really don't want to give up. That's the story, you know, they are 
our our projection of the story of me mm-hmm. and um and that's what keeps me going and if i you know who would i be without this constant conflict and there's a part of us that really is terrified of the answer to that yeah. and so you know we we can't go any more quickly than our fear allows and it can be that can be frustrating but but we're not alone you know and that's where we we really need to um invite in our teacher and um and and that's the help we need in our dream you know mm-hmm. i mean it's not really in our dream but um we need that perspective from outside the dream to to reach for yeah. um you know and and remember the direction that we we want, really do want to go and even when we're you know really still very stuck in the in whatever the story is that we're telling ourselves we can still at least introduce you know introduce the possibility uh, that this is not what's really going on i'm wrong and i am i'm not alone in this and i i you know i can there is help there even if it doesn't if i seem to be stuck in this right now mm-hmm. um you know and and as we go along with the course we have so many more experiences of making that shift so we have more you know um hope <laughs> that this will pass because it has passed mm-hmm. and you know and and we know the contrast now between what we really want and what and what we don't but the what we don't is i think in some ways more painful you know which is a motivating thing overall right right yeah, yeah. It, and it does seem like you know some of those sacred cows are, are more difficult than the the, the, the less you know, challenging ones. Um, oh, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but that's, but then that gives us an additional motivation too, when we realize that that's, that's really, when we see more clearly, that's, you know, what's standing in the way of a consistent piece rather than just a sporadic hit yeah. or miss kind of thing. Yeah. 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 So maybe we should read some of that. I, I, I think so. Yeah. It's, I, I, well, you just really summarized it wonderfully. Um, and, and I think what the reading will complement what you just said nicely too. Okay. So, do you want to start with the first paragraph? Okay. Prayer has has no beginning and no end. It is a part of life, but it does change in form and grow with learning until it reaches its formless state and fuses into total communication with God. In its asking form, it, it need not and often does not make appeal to God or even involve belief in him. At these levels, prayer is merely wanting out of a sense of scarcity and lack. And so, you know, that whole idea that prayer has no beginning and no end, it is part of life. Well, I mean, that's sort of what Ken would call a level one statement Mm -hmm. that, you know, we are in constant communication. Prayer is really the song that the father sings to the son and the son extends, you know, answers in constant um, communion. And that that, that communication, that, that communion has never been interrupted and so that is ongoing despite our you know dreams of of the terrible consequences of of choosing a life apart mm-hmm. and so um but you know it, it it does change in forms i mean he's going back and forth between levels here mm-hmm. but you know within our dream we start at a place of scarcity and lack mm-hmm. as um you know that this paragraph ends up explaining and um and you know that is that's the bottom of the ladder. That's the entry point mm-hmm. in which we see that we you know we we're asking t- to entreat. We're asking for help and form. Mm-hmm. And um, you know the journey up the ladder is really again that journey from um, in in learning to let our needs go go go. You know our belief in need go, mm-hmm. and um, choosing a different teacher to help us look at what we're at the way we're you know infantile infantile like i can't even make <laughs> childishly <laughs> how's that <laughs> yeah okay yeah, yeah um and and you know the way we, we're just dependent on everything outside of us and and on yeah. you know when we start the course the idea of jesus holy spirit as like a rescuer in the dream mm-hmm. but um but as we you know work with this over time and really genuinely and sincerely ask for help we're led you know, from that experience of wanting to manipulate the dream mm-hmm. to um, to really seeing that, you know, I don't I don't know my own best interests. I really do need to resign as my own teacher and let my needs go, you know, help help me to help me with what the real need here. And, you know, the real need is to heal my mind and um, mm-hmm. over this belief in one or the other and this belief in guilt 
over over um, you know the uh, mistaken assertion that I exist, but it's not my you know it's not my fault. The ego strategy of trying to say yes, I am guilty, but um, they're more guilty, and you know God needs to forgive. Me. God needs to participate in this. <laughs> Drag God into the dream once again. Right, yeah, right. yeah, 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 no. exactly. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. As you're sharing that and thinking about, uh, you know, the end of this the paragraph you just read and the beginning of the next one, I was thinking about, you know, how Ken Wapnick calls uh, our bodies and really our, our ego mind that is projecting that those bodies, the need machine. And I think that's such a, right. a, a great phrase. And it doesn't ask us to, to just deny our physicality. It just basically asks us to question how much um, that's, uh, you know, just notice how much that's robbing us of the peace that we really truly want. And uh, and the peace, like you say, is, is, is really our true nature that we've covered up. And it's, you know, a blocks the awareness of love's presence, if you will. And, right. uh, and that, but, and, you know, as we go up that ladder metaphorically, there's really, really no ladder and we're already there, but, but we, we need to, you know, take the little steps um, one at a time to get to where we realize that the needs that we thought were so important, you know, in, in our immaturity um, become, you know, less, less important. And as we mature out of uh, the idea that, that needs are really, uh, you know, controlling our, our minds and we realize that you no know, we're actually in, in control of what we think we need um, right yeah and then and right. that's the section that we read last week you know the secret of true prayers to forget the things we think we need but just, we first we have to notice what we think we need and right. uh and and just use that as our classroom don't we yeah yeah, what we need help with is really that, you know, again, that that idea that we need. <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah, yeah. Not the need itself, but the, but that we believe we need. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, so I, I, I was, we were talking about um, a little graphic I found on Facebook the other day that I think is, is kind of helpful. It's, it shows two people and two ladders, and this is sort of like the Holy Spirit's approach and the ego's approach. Uh, of course, the ego doesn't even recognize the the true ladder, which is forgiveness and 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 shared interest. But the ego's ladder um, has like ten foot uh, rungs that are ten foot apart. So it's like I'm not even going to try because <laughs> it seems unattainable. The Holy Spirit's ladder is like you know six, eight, ten inches apart kind of thing. So oh yeah, I can do that, you know. And um, and so you know we make much more progress when we just take every little annoyance, every little irritation, every little challenge at, at, a, at a time and ask Holy Spirit for help. And then, right. then that those become those little moments of peace that accumulate and then help us get to those bigger, more sacred cow, you know, more challenging things. And then we, we've built up some, some um, mental muscles, so to speak, into to where we can start, you know, chipping away at those, those bigger seemingly right. bigger things not that there's really in a magnitude in truth but but uh, for each of our individualized ladders or paths whatever you might say it does seem like we have you know the course says we have a highly individualized curriculum uh even though the the, the outcome is the same you know the, that experience is the one one thing that's in common yeah for everyone so the second paragraph uh goes that these forms of prayer asking out of need always involve feelings of weakness and inadequacy and could never be made by a son of God who knows who he is or what he is. Uh, no one then who is sure of his identity could pray in these forms. Yet it is also true that no one who is uncertain of his identity can avoid praying in this way. Well, that's pretty much all of us most of the time. Right. <laughs> so, so we need to just be honest with ourselves. And praying is as continual as life. Everyone prays without ceasing. Ask and you have received, for you have established what is what it is you want. Well, most of the time we ask for things in the world. We want the the circumstances and the relationships and the, the health and the finances and all you know all the, all those right. huge, huge general categories and little categories to to be better and, or different or you know some change in some other way. Right? But but uh, eventually we see well. Well, I've tried enough of those. Uh, roads that ended up being dead ends, you know, egos, false ladders, I think is a metaphor Ken uses in some of his talks. And, uh, you know, ego's got a gazillion, you know, ladders that don't go anywhere, but the Holy Spirit has the one in, in the middle that's, that's uh, right in our mind where we, where we can actually use it that will, will work, that has the, the, the appropriately spaced rungs that are just, you know, a moment to moment to moment asking for help and 
realizing, yeah, I could see peace instead of this. Right. Yeah. And so really like on, on this level, it really is just about, it's, you know, it's another way of talking about the forgiveness practice of mm -hmm. just <clears throat> um, right now, you know, what, what, what am I feeling right now? And what, and yeah. what is, you know, if I'm feeling anything but peace, and kindness toward everyone and everything then i've chosen you know then <laughs> i i am in the ego thought system i have chosen that and um and so i need help and so we need a lot more help than we think because yeah. it's very rare <laughs> that we right i mean yeah oh, absolutely yeah it really yeah. is when the course talks about a holy instant it's it's in those still quite rare moments when you, you know usually following some kind of major <laughs> ego attack that has brought us to the humility that is necessary <laughs> to to say i really need help i'm i'm like crazy right now mm -hmm. you know and and that awareness that i i've i've just lost my mind literally yeah. and um i mean it, you know it's, we can't really lose our mind but you know we've we've lost our we're not in touch with it our right mind and you know that we that we really need help so, you know, that is what um, brings us outside the dream. We join with that awareness outside the dream. And, and you know, really at that point, when we're sharing Jesus, Holy Spirit's, you know, which is a symbol of that loving presence in our mind, that memory of wholeness in our mind, that awareness, then um, everyone and everything, you know, we cannot but think kindly toward everyone and everything, including ourselves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a very peace peaceful perspective because there's no me in it. There's no need in it. But, you know, that's, we don't spend very much time there. <laughs> no, Still. but, but the glimpses do help, you know, every, every little, help. every little yeah. metaphoric yeah. rung does help. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We know yeah. when we, when we are in the, you know, the right mind that um, things, uh, yeah, that 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 we're at peace. You know that that the the conflict um, in 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 my experience is almost not even that in, there anymore in the way that I saw it. It isn't even even really accessible in the same way. Um, and anything that you know, if there is anything that would be kind or loving that that you know we might do or say or whatever, it we would, but there wouldn't be any. Um, any conflict or stress about it or need for anyone to agree with us or take our advice or, you know, any of that stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Which it's is, what, yeah. What you just shared kind of remind me of something I, I remembered from a, a, a interview or something with uh, Jay Krishnamurti who, who said, uh, you know, want, want, want to know my secret? I don't mind what happens. Right. I thought I thought that was pretty <laughs> pretty well stated. Is like if you we can, can get personally, you know, yeah, yeah. If 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 there's no person that is taking things personally, then we're we're transpersonal, right? So, but but that obviously it takes takes a while to get to that oh, place. Yeah. I mean, that's the top of the ladder. Really. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But we do, you know, that in the holy instant we have that experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I think. Yeah, it's usually helpful. Yeah, the, and so usually it's a shared interest kind of thing where we realize that our interests are exactly the same, regardless of who we're thinking about or talking with or, or you know, working with whatever. It's it's um, it's always about recognition that that my interests are the same as yours. Whoever the the you that I think is is uh, the the other happens to be right. Right. Yeah. Right. There's no there's no importance. The differences are still there, but there's yeah. no importance placed on them as separating yeah. us. As exactly. Living. Yeah. Yeah. As as a quick aside, I, I my wife and I have been watching a, a, a series on TV called uh, uh, "Live to Lead," and uh, they had a, a feature on the Prime Minister of New Zealand. And uh, uh, not to you know delve into politics or anything, but but uh, I thought it was refreshing that that her whole emphasis was on kindness. And 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 helping people help help each other, and that that's what, what really you know not just governments but society and everyone ought to be about you know, right. <laughs> and, and the emphasis of that it was just so obvious in in the way she spoke and and everything it was really inspiring actually and and I was thinking well that's that's really what I think we all want uh, we want to have that and 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 share it not just not just as like a theory but but i think that's where you know we start climbing the ladder when we realize well this is a great theory and when i actually you know apply it wow imagine that <laughs> i feel better you know because because i'm no longer 
trying to have a, a, a adversarial relationship with everyone and everything, which is the ego's default mode. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. And I mean, honestly, there are no solutions in this world yeah. that yeah. are kind to everyone. There, it's yeah. just, that's not the way we set it up. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, so. You know, if you're racking your brain to try to find one, you're going to be racking your brain because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's not, it's not possible. We deceive ourselves when we believe that it is possible. Mm -hmm. um, but at the level of the mind, we, we see, you know, at the level of the right mind, we see only shared interests mm -hmm. and that changes the way we respond to people yeah. and, you know, and ourselves. And, and, and so that, in that sense, we make a difference because, you know, all minds respond to that at some level and accept it when they're ready. There, since there is no time, that's another important metaphysical um, premise of the course. There is, the time is an ego invention, you know, to, um, uh, in, that we use to try to act out the idea of, oh, you know, the history of, of the human thought system, right? Of the ego thought system. Mm -hmm. But but the, but there that's not really true. It's all really happening right now. We can, yeah. we can make a completely different different choice right now. And at some you know, but but it's still as long as we're until our mind is completely healed and we awaken, you know, the kind use of time is is exactly what we're talking about. Is forgiveness is um, changing my mind is moving gently up the ladder. You know, making a different choice and the next choice and the next choice. Mm -hmm. um for something that is not outside the world you know so yeah, something that's permanent and, and sustain yeah. truly sustainable unlike mm -hmm. any any worldly or political solution or any, right. anything in, involving space and time and individuality <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 all right should i do paragraph three sure it is also possible to reach a higher form of asking out of need for in this world, prayer is reparative, and so it must entail levels of learning. Here, the asking may be addressed to God in honest belief, though not yet with understanding. A vague and usually unstable sense of identification has generally been reached, but tends to be blurred by a deep-rooted sense of sin, which is what we all carry over the belief that we're separate. It is possible at this level to continue to ask for things of this world in various forms, and it is also possible to ask for gifts such as honesty or goodness, and particularly for forgiveness, for the many sources of guilt that inevitably underlie any prayer of need. Without guilt, there is no scarcity. The sinless have no needs of those who believe that they're sinless have no needs. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, really what we what we are being led to in this ladder of prayer is 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 an awareness that, you know, to ask for um help with with addressing the real need you know with with looking at the real need and getting in touch with that is to ask for help for you know um to challenge my unkind thoughts help me with the barriers you know remove the barriers to my awareness of love's presence um that i see within myself and within everybody i encounter right that exactly. sense of unloved and unloving that we exactly. all yeah uh, yeah, and, and that's those unloving thoughts <clears throat> oftentimes and quite, you know, predominantly perhaps uh, take the form of some kind of projection or other onto uh, the people in our lives that, you know, we either see on digital screens nowadays or in our own homes or on the street or in this room, I'm thinking about the early workbook lessons I've been going through, yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, which are so profound. It's like you just, no matter where you look, where you... You, you know, ch you know, channel your physical gaze or your mental gaze. Uh, anything is is a, a suitable subject for for looking at, uh, you know, how in default ego mode we're going to project the the lack of innocence that we feel about our identity onto everything else because our mind does not want to stay in that um, that ego quadrant, um, and the, the ego makes sure that we we as quickly as possible project that out onto a our, our scapegoat theater and uh and we say oh, that's, out, that's there on the screen it's not in my mind not in my mind's backyard <laughs> but right then, yeah, yeah. yeah 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 i mean i think as as, as it, the more that i work with the course the more there's a feeling of it of simultaneously being in touch with the guilt 
you know, the pain of that guilt mm-hmm. and projecting it. And mm-hmm. so it's a very odd, you know, which I think that's what makes it worse is that you, you know, you're feeling that you are, it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Projection doesn't work. So you're not feeling relief from, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm just thinking off the top of my head here, but, but in, in practice, that's the way it seems to me. You're not getting the relief from, you know, the projection that we used to get. I mean, it used to relieve that guilt and and help us be mindless again. But now we're sort of, we're aware of the guilt. We feel the guilt, but we also feel the anger at someone else. The anger, you know, so we're kind of, you know, have that foot in both both worlds. Our mind is split and we're really having an experience of the conflict of the split mind. And I think that, um, you know, I mean, eventually that does help you really shift you into having a holy instant but Mm -hmm. it's not a good place to be when you're there you know yeah i mean because it basically the onus is no longer on things in the world i can fire my blame through on it's now it's like oh it's back in my mind and and the more we practice doing that the more we realize how discomforting that is and that's actually a good thing because that really you know increases the level of motivation that we have for for making a a sustainable change and the sustainable change is really just asking holy spirit the jesus of the course you know whatever you call it doesn't matter the inner kindness teacher more and more frequently for help i I had a little little interesting um insight the other day when i was looking at ken wapnick's wonderful metaphysical chart and uh, i'm going to just describe it in in the middle section which is really the emphasis of the course uh, because it doesn't really you know spend too much time on pure non-duality on the above the purple line in ken's chart if anyone's visualizing that uh that heaven knowledge god uh, non-duality that's that's really beyond the scope of the course Mm -hmm. um but even though that's the that's the threshold that the course leads us to at the top of the ladder and then and then the the lower third if you will uh is is also not emphasized much at all because that's the world of behavior and space and time and and what what's happening on uh, in this world and it doesn't ask us to change behavior but it does ask us to change what we think about the world and so when we start looking with uh holy spirit at our mind it's almost like and in ken's chart in the middle of that chart he has a dash line between the ego on one side and the holy spirit on the other and i was thinking why what would be another metaphor for a dash line how about a one-way mirror and sometimes they use those in in psychological uh studies when they're someone wants to to feel um you know open to share something and in not feel like there's a whole bunch of people observing them. They have they have those rooms where they have one-way mirrors, mm-hmm. sometimes in police interrogations, things like that. Um, and certainly department stores use them for, to find shoplifters. And so so there's that whole you know idea of deception of a one-way mirror. Well, the, the way the ego uses its side of the, whole, the one-way mirror is it's, it's completely reflective. And so it can't see to, into the Holy Spirit side of things. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like the ego says, the darkness that that I have is all I can see because I'm just it's the the darkness bouncing off the mirror, if you will, which is kind of kind of there's a little bit of light only in the sense that you know our identity as an ego is really borrowed from our real identity, so that there's we're never completely dark, but but uh, it can it's, it can seem pretty pretty gloomy at times, but but then the light you know never really gets through from the other side, uh, whereas the Holy Spirit can look into the nothingness through its side of the one-way mirror and see that there's nothing there. Mm-hmm. And I think I think that's why we have to keep asking for help from that part of our mind, our right mind, as the Course calls it, to look into the emptiness of the ego's side of things, see that there's nothing there, and with a gentle, non-derisive smile, just say, oh, I can, af- I can see peace instead of this. I can't afford to forgive myself. But we just have to keep looking consistently and patiently and and you know repetitively uh until we get to those sacred cows and and the bigger bigger forgiveness classrooms huh right and just yeah. you know again it stays present as you can just you know right now yeah where am i right now right yeah. and you know what what is the need i what what is my real need here you know even if we're not willing to accept it you know that to be honest about that I mean, ken is always saying you know, just, just admit it, say it just like that. I, I don't, mm-hmm. I'm not ready to do this, but you know, I know that, um, I, you know, <laughs> I know I've made a choice for this and, but, and I'm not willing to let it go right now. And yeah. Yeah. 
at least bring, you know, we, it can't really survive that long um, once we've at least acknowledged that. You mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. So again, we're trying to learn we're a decision-making mind that we're not powerless right. of the world we see or the relationship that we're in. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so our resistance becomes a central focus of the of the forgiveness classroom, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which, which, you know, resistance is, is any belief in me. I mean, we're in resistance before we come to the course. We're in resistance. Right, <laughs> right. We're just, we, like you say, we just become more aware of it and it some, becomes yeah. more acutely painful in the sense that it's like, oh, now I know what I'm doing and I'm not trying, you know, at least on some levels, I'm not denying it as much as I used to. Right. I so, think we a lot more in touch with the craziness of it. Yeah, yeah. Which, um, you know, it, which the course, I mean, Jesus talks about all, throughout the course, he uses psychological terms. You know, he, mm -hmm. calls, he tells us that we're psychotic. Yep. <laughs> hallucinating. And, you know, and I think more and more you have an experience of that as you work with this. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, I mean, I really don't want to let this go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's really, I, I had a, have had an interesting experience lately in a relationship where I realized that there's no, there's really nothing in behavior wise that the person could do that would make me change my mind as Susan, you know, I mean, it really, there's, there's, I've already made up my mind. Uh, and, and, you know, I see all those early workbook lessons that talk about, I see only the past and, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm preoccupied with the past, like today's that because I see the past and I'm preoccupied by past. Thoughts. <laughs> I, I mean, it really got me this time because mm -hmm. I, I just see, yeah, yeah. There's, you know, I am blind. I have blinded myself to seeing any commonality with this person. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and that's, uh, I mean, it's very painful to, to be in that place, you know, right. but, but, but to recognize the craziness of there's really, I'm not seeing this person now and there's nothing that person could do mm -hmm. as the person or me as Susan that would change that. It's gotta be at the level of the mind, yep. right? Yep. Yeah, shared interests are not in ego's vocabulary whatsoever. Yeah, no. I mean, the, the idea of, 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 of I'm oh, oh, sorry. Say again. Yeah, I'm sorry, but that history, that personal history, is is we make it a, a wall of granite. It's not yeah. a veil to be lifted. It's it's the defense against truth that you know, and that we think preserves us. So yeah, exactly. And I think the wall of granite kind of fits in with the one way mirror metaphor as well. It's, it's like the wall of granite from the ego's perspective is this impenetrable, you know, light years thick. Uh, it totally unassailable uh, fortress of, mm -hmm. uh, of mind that's like, no, you're, there's no way you can possibly get through that. Uh, but from the Holy Spirit's perspective, no, it's like you can drop a feather through it. You know, it's like a cloud and it's, it's, it's like the light, light goes completely through there and the Holy Spirit sees that there's nothing to that, that empty cavern of the ego mind. Yeah. 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 So, Should we read the uh, next paragraph or? I don't know. We're not going to be able to read the whole thing. No, no. But I think one, maybe one more. because I. One more. Yeah. Or sure. maybe two more. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Or maybe like the, why don't we read the, um, the last two paragraphs? Okay. Okay. I also just want to touch on the praying for one's enemies. I think that in the okay. fourth paragraph, I, I, when I was rereading it, I was thinking, well, that's, that's got some, some real, you know, <laughs> substance, okay. substance to it, because the idea that the, the, the whole idea, the concept of an enemy is, um, you know, the, the, I think this uh, points out very nicely is, is just a, a complete uh, reversal of the metaphysics of the course. Right. Uh, and, and that, but that's, that's where, you know, we just need to be honest how often we have an adversarial, combative, confrontational, right dualistic attitude about as egos with everyone and everything really and it's right. really only by practicing the mindfulness of looking at how much we want to you know be at war uh mentally at least if not physically with with everything else in the universe other than the the, the self the little less self i've identified with that we begin to make progress it seems sure yeah um, so why don't you go ahead and read that paragraph? Then. Okay, sure. So, so paragraph four says, at this level also comes that curious contradiction in terms known as praying for one's enemies. <laughs> yeah, the contradiction in quotes, the contradiction lies not in the actual words, but rather in the way in which they're usually interpreted. While you believe you have enemies, you have limited prayer to the laws of this world. 
and have also limited your ability to receive and to accept to the same narrow margins. And yet, if you have enemies, you have need of prayer and great need too. I, I like the understatement there. And what does the phrase really mean? Pray for yourself that you may not seek to imprison Christ and thereby lose the recognition of your own capital I identity, which of course would be all inclusive. Mm -hmm. Be traitor to no one or you'll be treacher treacherous to yourself. Well, the only the only way that ego knows how to be is traitorous and treacherous because it's it's a dualistic premise. Right, right. We, we believe that we pulled off the separation. And from that premise, everything that's other is enemy. I mean, that's that's just a given. Mm -hmm. Whereas from a, a non-dual perspective, which is what the Holy Spirit reflects and symbolizes, um, everyone's our long lost best friend, our savior, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and when we are projecting our guilt onto the alleged others, it's like, oh, that's my classroom. I, that's the next wrong right. I need to look at. Every moment that right. someone seems to be upsetting us, it's like, I'm not upset for the reason I think it's not out there. It's not this other person. Right. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I just I just thought that was a loaded paragraph. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've almost read the whole thing, but um, I'm trying to think what would be the best way to conclude it. Do you want to just read the last two? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Let's just read the whole thing. I mean, oh, okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Sure. Think. Sure. Why not? It, yeah. It's not that long. No. Yeah. Let it never be forgotten that prayer at any level is always for yourself. If you, again, it's one mind in need of healing, right? Mm -hmm. If you unite with anyone in prayer, you make him part of you. The enemy is, so in other words, if you bring anyone into that prayer that, of healing my own mind, you know, healing my mind about blank, as the workbook instructs us, mm -hmm. um, then you're including them in that in that prayer. The enemy is you, um, as is the Christ. Before it can become holy, then prayer becomes a choice. You do not choose for another. You can but choose for yourself. Pray truly for your enemies, for herein lies your own salvation. Forgive them for your sins, for your projections, and you will be forgiven indeed. And that's really the heart of the whole idea of forgiveness. You know, Isn't it? It's only that, one mind in need of healing. It's not about anybody else. Yeah. That one word, pray them, forgive them for your sins, which of course right. aren't real, but I have to bring right. that bring that back into, into my mind, see that it's my projection that I need to forgive, not right. anything anyone else is doing. Yeah. Forgive my choice, my, my decision-making choice for the ego thought system, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Should I read seven? Sure. Okay. Prayer is a ladder reaching up to heaven. At the top, there is a transformation much like your own, for prayer is part of you. The things of the earth are left behind, all unremembered. There is no asking, for there is no lack. Identity in Christ is fully recognized, is set forever, beyond all change and incorruptible. The light no longer flickers and will never go out. Now without needs of any kind and clad forever in the pure sinlessness that is the gift of God to you, his son, prayer can again become what it was meant to be. For now it rises as a song of thanks to your creator, sung without words or thoughts or vain desires, unneedful now of anything at all. So it extends as it was meant to do. And for this giving, God himself gives thanks. Wow. That's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> it is. And it kind of, it's a kind of um, an echoing of that introduction to the song of prayer that talks about the, you know, the whole, the song the father sings to the son and the son returns and, you know, just the, where, where prayer will be at the top of the ladder, right? The joyous concord. Yeah. 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 Okay. God is the goal of every prayer. So returning to God is the goal of every prayer, giving it timelessness instead of end. Nor has it a beginning because the goal has never changed and is in our uninterrupted that you know communion is, is ongoing. Prayer in its earlier forms is an illusion because there is no need for a ladder to reach what one has never left. Yet prayer is part of forgiveness as long as forgiveness itself an illusion remains unattained. Prayer is tied up with learning until the goal of learning has been reached. And then all things will be transformed together and returned unblemished into the mind of God that they never left. 
being beyond learning, beyond our conception in this world, this state cannot be described. The stages necessary to its attainment, however, need to be understood if peace is to be restored to God's son, who lives now with the illusion of death and the fear of God. Right, and that's what the whole that's what the whole course is about, and and um, the whole the whole song of prayer pamphlet is going to go on to explain the various you know the forms of prayers, praying for others, praying with others, um, and you know the end of the journey, and and then go on to look at forgiveness, you know, to use forgive to look at forgiveness in those same terms of climbing up a ladder and healing from body, you know, in the same way from healing as a, you know, believing that we're trying to heal a body to um, the recognition that it's only my mind that is in need of healing, right? So. Exactly. Yeah, yeah as, as you're re reading that, I was thinking about how it's like so much of the course, um, the contrast is brought together between the two thought systems so that we can see clearly, you know, how crazy the ego is and, and mm -hmm. not derisively, but, you know, gently laughable it is in truth. And, and when we just, you know, look at without, um, <laughs> squirming too much and just, you know, because the Holy Spirit, you know, doesn't flinch and, and looking at that. And, he, and I think that awareness is asking us to, to, you know, consider that we could look at that and not go crazy, but just say, wow, that, that is crazy. And why, why right. would I want to identify with that? Well, and, and it and is that, that gentle smile as you yeah. just too, you know, that yeah, yeah. Um, not taking it so seriously. And, mm -hmm. Um, as we go up, you know, as we move along with this, and I, I, it's funny that you said that because I had an experience this morning where I, I, you know, our right mind is always gently smiling. Jesus is always gently smiling and no matter what tantrums we're throwing. And, um, and I had the experience of, I, you know, it's not like I heard Jesus saying that, but I heard myself saying, no, it's not funny, you know, <laughs> almost as I was like, Shut up! Don't tell me it's funny. And 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 I realized I didn't. I want to look at it. It's funny, you know. This is not funny. Even though I'm behaving like a complete lunatic, you know. I mean, not. I didn't have anyone else there, but I was still behaving like a lunatic, and I was aware of it. And you know, and I was refusing to 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 not take it seriously, you know. But I was aware that a part of me doesn't take it seriously, and I think that. We can't fully ex escape that either as we, yeah. you know, the more yeah. we work with this. And so that's a blessing too. And it I, is truly a blessing, isn't it? Yeah. That, that uh, you know, it, Holy Spirit ain't going anywhere. And, yeah. And, 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 and we're we, ready uh, to laugh with you, but, um, you know, yeah. Yeah. And all roads lead to Holy Spirit. We, we mm -hmm. may have our individual trajectories. You know, you might be right. coming from Denver. I might be coming from, from Yahats, but uh, metaphorically, right. but, but we're all, all of us, all not just eight billion, but the entire entirety of creation will all return to that uh, as as we perceive it at this present moment. Even though yeah. everyone's already home, right? So, yeah. the truth. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So anyway, but yeah, it's a beautiful section. So. It is. It really is. Yeah, and and a reminder to to just you know keep keep asking for help, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and a reminder, I guess, for the new year. You know, if you have if you have goals, right. goals, you That's know, right. you're moving yeah. up the ladder. This is our only purpose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Move up the ladder by practicing right now. Mm -hmm. and, you know, looking at all the craziness, looking at my choice for craziness. So yeah. Yeah, I, I was thinking about the you know, uh, make this year different by making it all the same. Another way of restating that would be make this year different, but by uh, gently laughing at the egos. Right predisposition to want to make differences real right yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 well thank you again susan for a wonderful conversation and uh, i i found it very helpful and hopefully others will too so thank you i appreciate talking with you as always likewise likewise and uh, i'll send the usual emails and whatnot so anyway okay great all right all right thank you so much bruce thank you